In this demo, we'll deploy a VKS cluster in VCF 9. We'll do this using the new private cloud experience we've delivered with VCF 9 and deploy VKS with VCF automation using the Kubernetes service, which enables us to easily deploy clusters on demand. Whether you need a single large cluster or multiple smaller clusters for fault isolation, VKS makes the process fast and repeatable. It integrates seamlessly with your existing virtual infrastructure, including storage and GPU resources, and supports multiple Kubernetes versions for testing and validation. This gives your team flexibility to run Kubernetes workloads alongside other vSphere workloads, all with a consistent management experience. In the VCF automation portal using a consumer persona, I'll go to my services, Kubernetes, then create a new Kubernetes cluster. Let's select the custom configuration, give our cluster a name, and then select the version we want to install. We'll also notice that we're matching the cluster class version to the version of the service. The reason we've done this is to make sure not only the functionality matches, but also this means it won't trigger any automatic rolling updates of your cluster. So when you update the service, the classes you already have deployed are unaffected unless you decide to update them. Scrolling down, we'll see a lot more options that can be directly configured in here, like certificate rotation, proxy, or persistent volume storage. In this example, we'll keep our defaults, click Next, and move on to standard configuration of a control plane. Here, we can set the replicas, VM class, storage class, and image for the OS. For the control plane, we can choose Photon or Ubuntu. Next, we'll set the configuration of the node pools. Click Add Node Pool, then configure sizing, storage, OS image, and various other settings. The Subscribe Content Library allows us to choose from Photon or Ubuntu for our OS image, but you can also build your own images for Windows and use that instead. We can also add labels or taints for our nodes directly in this configuration. This is really helpful in letting us control where our pods go. For example, we can ensure node pools with GPUs or high memory, are only used for certain AI workloads. You can also add multiple node pools with different configurations. Click Next, and then before finishing, let's look through the YAML resource manifest on the right side of the screen that is automatically created as we selected options in the UI. This is the full configuration for our Kubernetes cluster. If it looks good, we should download the YAML file before we deploy the cluster. If we'd like to reuse it later, modify it with advanced options, or store it in a repository for GitOps. Click Finish and wait for our cluster to deploy. After that, let's take a look at it in the UI. From here, we can download the kube config file to access the cluster. We can also easily perform operations on the cluster directly as well. For example, if we want to scale, all we have to do is click Edit on the Node Pool section and add another replica of the node. We can also change the sizing or add persistent volumes. Now let's hop into the CLI to see how we can interact with this cluster. First, we'll list the clusters, and we can see the one we just created. Next, let's register the authenticator. And then we'll get the kubeconfig file for this cluster and add it to our existing kubeconfig file. Since all of my contacts are in a single kubeconfig file, let's look for the name of the new one that I have just added, and then we'll create a context for the VCF CLI to connect to that Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, we have two context types, Kubernetes and Cloud Consumption Interface, or CCI. If you're utilizing VCF automation, choose Cloud Consumption Interface. If you're accessing, say, the supervisor or VKS clusters directly in an environment that doesn't have VCFA, choose the Kubernetes type. For this purpose, let's use Cloud Consumption Interface, and then we enter our API token that we pulled from our VCF automation portal. Now that we've done all of the setup in the CLI, we'll be able to easily switch between different contexts in the future. Now that we've set our context, we can run kubectl commands and see our VKS nodes. Thanks for watching this quick demo on how to deploy VKS.